since that he was, I think at the time, chairman of the Democratic yes. Party. Right. He was a longtime powerhouse mm -hmm. in political poli in mm -hmm. the politics of the city and the county. Right. And so there was also this hidden fact that commissioners were picked at large right. while he was sitting in right, the chair. Right. And so you had to run all over the county right. in order to get a, a job that paid at the time about $40,000 a year. Yeah, but what does it probably pay now? What does it pay now? 80. Okay. But it probably would have cost you 250000 <laughs> to win the seat. <laughs> yeah. So naturally anybody that wasn't slated would have a very difficult time winning the seat. Um, here comes the Iceman. Yes. As a reformer. Yes. <laughs> well, I mean, I, you know, I mean, I, I think you, I, I think in public life, most people kind of see you as a good public servant. I really, I really think that that's the image of you out there. Well, I've tried to be. Yeah. Uh, as a matter of fact, I used to tell folks that Jeremiah and Butler, Jeremiah, exalted servant of God, and Butler, yeah. servant of man. Yeah. So I ought to know how <laughs> to serve, and, and so I've tried to do that. Uh -huh. uh, but it, it's very difficult when you don't have everyone pulling in the same direction. Because mm. I know a lot of people have been talking about Jerry for mayor, Jerry for mayor, and I, you know, <laughs> I mean, people have talked, you know, I've, I've heard that across yeah. the years. Since you, how long have you been a commissioner now? Since 1986. Okay, yeah. So, first year. Uh, yeah, I've heard that. I've heard people wanting you to throw, throw your hat in the ring. but uh, So they can throw it back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's normally the case, you know. I love you as long as you're sitting where you are. Come on. And the minute they put you out there, you know, they uh, pull away from well, you. You create you know? enemies. Yes, you know, yes. As a matter of fact, uh, there's a man by the name of James Mack who was a great musician, arranger, and, t and a professor over at uh, Harold Washington College. He came by my house one day, I was cutting the grass, and he said, Jerry, I hear you're planning to run for politics. <laughs> I said, yeah. He said, why? People like you. <laughs> 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 it took me a little while to figure out what he was telling me, yeah. but it, it dawned on me after I got elected. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. What uh, what what commissions do you uh, boards do you sit on on the uh, the uh, uh, county? Well, I'm chairman of the Health and Hospitals Committee, which has now become almost defunct because of the new health and hospital system that has been put in place. I also serve as one of the members of this new system. It's an eleven-member board. And we are going to try and reform the health system. <laughs> I'm always president. <laughs> in, in, in county government. Yeah. Uh, I serve on several new committees, and, and when I say new committees, these are committees that came to me because of the Maldonado leaving and, and Quigley leaving. Uh, but basically, almost all of the committees consists of the, the committees of the whole and at least the important committees, mm -hmm. the Finance Committee, Law Enforcement, those kinds of committees. In fact, you are in charge. How, how is the uh, health system for Cook County? Well, we have just hired a new chief executive, and we have high hopes for him. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the things we need to do, and, and this was really the argument behind the tax increase, was that when we had the $100 million cutback, we cut too deep. Mm -hmm. and canceled a lot of the services that the Bureau of Health had been given. Closed some clinics, mm -hmm. moved some things around. And now we need to replace them. Mm -hmm. And hopefully we're going to replace them with better and more qualified individuals and that our system will run better. The CEO, Bill Foley, has said in a meeting that if we want our patients to have good care, then we have to have employees who feel that they'll be cared about. And so that's going to be the focus. Yeah, because yeah, you did lay out quite a few people and uh, it seemed like it was pretty contentious, you know, when it was going through, you know, oh, people yeah. was ch charging and, the county with different things. And it's not over yet. There's mm. still going to be more because what we found is that we have an overabundance of people in some spots and 
not enough in others to do is to put the right people in the right place in the right amount. Yeah, I noticed that uh, Oak Forest, you got a lot of deer out there. That deer, <laughs> <could> I, <laughs> in the forest reserve, there's a lot of deer running around here, so. Well, you know, <laughs> yeah, it's out there in the woods. But yeah. <laughs> we are going to, tr it's a, it was a hospital that was really designed to take care of the chronically ill. Mm. And and a lot of people used to just go there to do the end of life stuff. Oh, God. Uh, we expect that when we really get it operative, and we're doing a strategic plan now to show us where we should have our eggs in the basket. Mm -hmm. Provident and Oak Forest are going to be focused on. And of course, the John Strozier Hospital on the west side is like the flagship. So we doubt there'll be too much done to it, but the other two hospitals will probably be designed in a different configuration than they have been. What are you guys gonna do with the old county hospital? Well, Nobody decided if yet. I had my way, yes. I would tear the old building down. Oh, no. Because much. I think the building is just in the way. Now we've had some people who are the landmark kind of people who want to save the facade Saving that facade, if I'm not mistaken, and my memory serves me well, is probably going to cost us about $20 million. Okay. Uh, and I don't know whether it's going to do anybody any benefit except the people with the landmark and the preservationists mm -hmm. who believe that it's worth saving. You, you, there are a lot of people who say, well, my son was born there, my daughter was born there, I was born there, mm -hmm. and so they want to make it a monument to who was born there. I've been of the mind that the people who do the work are really the people who make the monument and, and not the architectural structure. Okay. Uh, we need that space, okay. I think, for a new nurses quarters. Okay. You know, we used to have a nursing school over at County Hospital. Right. It's not there anymore. But I would like to see it come back and I would like to see that space that we're rehabbing or redoing, redeveloping where the old hospital sits right. to become that place. Okay. It's not a good idea. Yeah, that's something to think about, you know. Speaking of uh, structures being preserved, now you were born in the Cabrini Green section. No, I was born in Mississippi. That's what I thought, but someone always kind of bring you out of Cabrini. I said, wait a minute, I thought they told me no, he was born in the Delta. Well, up there, I was you know? born in Sunflower, Mississippi. Yeah, that's what I, I had raised. heard. You know, I said, yes, okay. Yes. On Cedric Street. Oh, right, there you go. I said, wait a minute. Somebody, I said, wait a minute. I said, hey, he, um, for what I've read, I said, that the, the, uh, he came from, you're right, up in the Delta. I knew that. Right. <laughs> from right. the Delta. I said, and this other boy, one of one of those other guys sung with the impression, came out of Chattanooga somewhere. Well, actually, three of them came out of Chattanooga. Okay, Arthur yeah. Richard Brooks and Sam Gooden. Okay, yeah, Sam Gooden. And Fred yeah. Cash, who replaced me, he's from Chattanooga also. Yeah, okay. I said, now, but they always want to say Cabrini Green. I said, well, Chicago well, always we, has a way of claiming uh, John. Claim Chicago and claim John both of them a little bit. <laughs> we came to Chicago, my mom and dad. I should say, brought me to Chicago when I was three years old. Okay, so I guess that's why they so say you're from there. Then. I grew up <laughs> yeah. in Cabrini Green. Yeah. Uh, and Curtis moved into Cabrini Green when he was about 10 or 11. Yes. And so he grew up in Cabrini Green. And Major Lance grew up in Cabrini yes, Green. And Ramsey right. Lewis grew up. Yes. So the, it, there's a whole heritage of talent and personalities that came out of Cabrini Green. And I guess. You know, if you want to lay claim to something, why not claim it? Well, yeah, Chicago, they have a, Chicago to claim the blues. I said the blues is from <laughs> Mississippi, folks. That's our stuff. I said, well. Chicago claimed jump. I said, they recorded us after we got here. I said, but well, we, that's the, the wolf and all of them, they straight out of there, out of that Mississippi mud, you know. We talk about that a lot in the, in the only the strong survive. Mm. Yeah. Now, speaking of entertainment, that's good. That's a good way to segue into that, you know. I know you can talk about this. <laughs> Where, what do you think about entertainment today and contrast it with the period when I was still in high school when my Yo Precious Love came out? <laughs> you know, yeah. contrast that period with where we are today with 
music or entertainment or whatever you want to call it. I don't know. Let me say this to you, Brother yeah. Cheatham. <laughs> <laughs> Do 